This channel contains mature subject matter, so if you're not 19 years or older, don't watch this channel. With that being said, let's get into it. Hey everyone, notice the tobacco plant, the tall one on the right at the back, has a lean to it. It's not supposed to be leaning over. So I check it out, the leaves and all the branches, all the upper growth looks fantastic. So I decide to inspect the roots. These two plants were put in these pots before my super soil mix was complete. So they're actually made from old potting soil. You can see that when I dust the soil back, there's hundreds and thousands of very, very small white bugs and they seem to be eating the roots. I did a little bit of research to try and figure out what these bugs are eating the roots. They're very small and I haven't actually identified them, but they could be root mites or root gnats or root fleas or root aphids. They're all very small and white in color. I tried to prop the plant back up and pack the soil, but it wants to flop right back over, so I know that the structural integrity of the roots is already compromised. So I'm going to get this dealt with as quick as I can. I start by inspecting all the tobacco plants in the grove, and like I said, only these two plants are in the old soil. All the other pots that have my super soil mix, those are all 100% good. And it just goes to show you that sometimes prevention is the best method. So I go around and I inspect every single tobacco plant and I find that it's only the two in the old soil and I'm gonna take them out of the greenhouse. I'm going to isolate them. Because this bug colony is getting quite large, I don't want it spreading to other plants. The super soil has insect frass. Superfly insect frass is known to help keep pests out of the soil. So I'm going to try that first, but at this point it might be too little too late. I'll also be adding mosquito dunks. Mosquito dunks won't attack the adults, but it will help to kill off any larva. This product contains a bacteria which I'm not going to pronounce, I'm just going to let you read it right there. Active ingredient. And what it does is it uh, basically attacks or infects mosquito larvae before it has time to become actual larva. And I'm hoping that same concept is gonna work against the larva of whatever kind of bug these are. I add insect frass and mosquito dunks directly to a five gallon bucket of water. One mosquito dunk will do quite a large area, so I'm only gonna use a small amount because I'm just putting it in two plants. I drop my air stones in there just to help agitate it and help some of the chitin release from the insect frass. Uh, I would also just use a stick and stir it up uh, and go stir it every five or 10 minutes. And I let it bubble for about mm, one or two hours and then I use it. I water in these two plants very thoroughly, making sure that I have lots of runoff coming out of the bottoms of the pots and that everything is very thoroughly drenched. The next morning, I come to check out the plants and I ended up staking the one plant with a piece of bamboo just to help the roots take some pressure off so it doesn't want to fall over. And like I suspected, the insect frass and mosquito dunks are a better preventative measure than really getting rid of any kind of pests. So I'm gonna have to go to phase two and I'm gonna have to get mean to these little buggers. All right. I'm in a very cool situation right now because I have organic homegrown tobacco. 
If you don't have homegrown tobacco, you could use cigar butts, uh, maybe old cigars you don't like. Um, you could even use cigarette butts, but I'm not sure if you could call that organic. Uh, they have a lot of added chemicals. Basically what we're doing with the tobacco is we're extracting nicotine. Nicotine is a toxin and extracted in large quantities, it could be lethal to small pests. There are certain nicotine based chemicals which are banned from organic use, but those aren't actually nicotine. All I'm doing is a simple extraction. I'm taking the organic tobacco leaf, which has been cured and fermented, and I'm gonna be boiling about one cup of chopped up leaves into about a half gallon of water. I slowly simmer for two hours, and this is what it looked like at the end. And since I have such a heavy infestation on those two plants, I'm going to include two other organic remedies. I'm going to be adding some crushed garlic and some homemade fresh chili sauce. This is extremely hot chili sauce, and if you don't have something like this, you could use like maybe sriracha. Uh, I wouldn't use any type of chili oil, I would use a vinegar based sauce. As soon as I take the tobacco tea off the stove, I crush in my half a head of garlic and I add all of my chili sauce, which was about a quarter cup. I let the tea cool for a few hours until it reaches ambient temperature. I then strain it into a five gallon bucket and I add a little bit more water. I think I had about a gallon and a half uh, by the time I added all my water. I wish I added maybe a little bit more water because I felt like I didn't quite drench the roots as much as I would have liked to. Even though the roots are under attack, I want you to take a look at how happy and how beautiful and luscious these plants are doing. They responded extremely well to the insect frass. And I think insect frass, whether it's good for pest prevention, it's also a fantastic amendment. And one of the leaves got a crack in one of the veins. It was pretty windy last night. I'll be using this pesticide as a soil drench, but if you need to use it as a foliar spray, you should add a small amount of soap to break the surface tension. I would use pure cast aisle soap. Cast aisle soap is made from plant-based oils and it's a more gentle chemical that they use to convert the fats into soap. And in this case, it's peppermint scented. Peppermint is also a natural pest deterrent. All right, let's get it on the plants. I'm sure that this killed a lot of critters almost instantly, but I let it wait for about a day, and this is the following morning. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? It looks like it worked to me. It looked like it worked very well. I was seeing thousands of bugs yesterday, and today I'm seeing just a couple. So what I think I'm going to do is I'll give it a few days and I'm gonna make another tea exactly the same as that one. And I think after that second soil flush, it should probably kill all these little buddies. But I'm concerned I'm also gonna be killing the living bacteria in the soil that benefits it. So once I finish my second round with this homemade pesticide, I'm gonna brew a compost tea and I'm gonna inoculate these pots with good living bacteria from the tea. And here's what the plants look like 24 hours after the homemade pesticide. I think the leaves are looking very happy and it's a little bit hard to tell because of the rain and overcast today. But when I go into the greenhouse, the other leaves are looking a little bit droopy on all the healthy plants. So I think I'm gonna call this a win. And if you guys are interested in following these tobacco plants, um, 
definitely hit subscribe. I'm going to be giving updates every chance I get. And I'll be telling you guys everything that I do, being 100% honest, for better or for worse. I think as a human race, we've really went in the wrong direction with agriculture for long enough. And I think it's really fun to be experimenting with new methods that don't involve chemicals and seeing success. Anyways, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching right to the end. Leave a comment, leave a question. I love to read all the comments and questions. I'll get back to you. I get back to all of them. Thanks a lot, guys.